Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Big Kev's Zoom Cooking, part of the Men of Hope Group and Black Swan Health. Hope you've all been good. It's a bit chilly still. Mr. G is doing the recording, or should I call him uh, Gerard Spielberg? We'll see. But anyway, today we're going to do um, a nice one. I think most people like it. Chili con carne. Um, and I'm also going to do uh, a guacamole to go on the side. I like that, the avocado. It just gives a bit, if it's a bit hot, it just takes a little bit out. But we'll see anyway. So I'll show you the ingredients first. Um, I'll just give my hands a quick wash. I'm on my new frame, so I feel a bit like, um, I can't remember his name, uh, Davros of the Daleks. <laughs> you know, being able to zoom around everywhere. But anyways, just give a hand to quick wash and then we'll look at the ingredients. Chili con carne, again, it's just mince. It's a good dish. People do all sorts of variations. Some put carrots and celery in uh, just to boost it up. But uh, today we're just going to have the mince and uh, the red kidney beans. So what I've got, I've got 500 grams of good, good beef. I've got some flat leaf parsley and I've got some chilies. I've got two red onions and one white onion. I've got two lemons, two avocados, a tub of sour cream, the list goes on, some tomato paste, chopped tomatoes, red kidney beans, my trusty olive oil, my chopped garlic paste, the beef stock in powder. This is probably the best one, this uh, Massey one, it's really good. Um, I've got some uh, chili powder ground, which is my sort of secret ingredient. You don't have to do this one. But this is a smoked paprika. It gives it a bit of a smoky taste. Um, Wings hands down. And I've got some coriander. And believe it or not, salt today, but I'll only use that if I have to. So, that's a bit of a work. We're ready to go. So, what I'm going to do, oh, by the way, normally I'd put the saucepan on now, water to bring it to the boil. But once again, I've got some rice cooked, so that's all ready to go. But normally we'd have the water boiling, bring it to boil, add your cup of rice and cook it till it's tender, but mine's already done. So I'm gonna turn my pan, got the old electric pan again this week. I loved it. I found it really good last week. Um, and uh, like I said, with these classes we're doing on a Monday with um, Food Bank, they use them and uh, it's great, you know. Um, but anyway, what we're gonna start off with uh, is the red onions. The white onion is gonna be for my guacamole. But this pan's on, just going to add a little bit of oil, probably a dessert spoonful of oil. Mince has always got oil in it, you know, the fat breaks down. We're going to, now we're going to chop our onions up to go into the, um, into the pan as it heats. Nothing too fancy, I just cut them through and then, you know, small dice, nicely chopped. Oh, these smell beautiful, these onions. I do the, the red onions again. I find them, when they're cooked and soft, they're, they're a little bit sweeter, but they're good, you know. Um, but they do also give that good onion in taste. Uh, I sort of contradicted myself a bit there because onions can be hot. But um, we we'll just roughly chop them. I hope you've all had a good week. I've had a really good week this week. Um, with my NDIS and things. Okay, so now we've got those um, on the go. Let's get these into the pan while it's heating up. Just going to scrape them into the bowl to make it easier. A knife, a bit of a wipe, and the board. So in go the onions. Got the spoon out to give it a stir. Now we, we don't want to brown the onions, we want to do the usual where we you can see them in the pan there in the oil. We just want to um soften them up. 
Also, while they're doing, we're putting in some garlic. Probably about, oh, about, about a heat teaspoonful. That's plenty. Um, and then we'll just start cooking them through. Here comes Bo. Hi, Bo. How are you? Good, good. So we've got that cooking away. You can hear it sizzling. So we're going to soften those onions up. I don't know if any of you tried the uh, the pork we did last week. I found it really tasty. Um, seems to be quite popular with a lot of people. Very colourful. So anyway, these onions are softening up really nice. So probably probably going to cook them for oh I don't know probably about two or three minutes. That you can see them softening up. You can see them becoming like transparent. That's what you want. Um, try not to brown them. Like I said, you know, uh, sometimes yeah. Because it's a dark coloured dish, it wouldn't really matter, but you don't want that fried onion taste, you know, like you have on your burger or your sausage roll. You want the onion taste, but not, not the fairground taste, as I call it. You know, so. <laughs> there we go. So, so they've been on roughly two minutes there. So now I'm going to get my mince. This is all great. Woolies mince, this was quite cheap. I think $5 this week on special, so... Not too bad. That goes in. We'll put that one over there. And we'll break it down. And, uh, always, you, you have to break meat. So if you don't break it down, you get like a little meatball. You don't want, you want, you want this. Either. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna break it all down. We're gonna keep stirring it. What, what we wanna do is brown the mince. So while that's cooking there, we'll, we'll start with some of the other ingredients. Because the mince takes a little bit of while to cook, I haven't prepped everything like I would normally. I'm just cooking, there's not much in it. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to take a chili. Now these are red chilies, they are quite warm. And I learned something very interesting actually. I've always been told chilies are hot because of the seed. Well, I actually watched a cooking program the other day, I think it was that um, Paul Hollywood Pies and Puds. And he went to a place in Bristol in the UK, and there, down there there's some guys that call themselves the Chili Club, and they eat chilies. And they eat like 10 on the Richter scale, which is the hottest you can get, and they are hot. But they said everybody thinks it's the seed, but apparently it's the, the white flesh between the, the skin and the seed that is very hot. So make, make sure you get that out, because I didn't know that. I used to think it was always the seed, but apparently it's the flesh what attaches the seed to the to the to the outside to the to the actual fruit. Yeah, so that's a new one for me, and I've been cooking what all the odd years now, you know. Yeah. I started very young when I was one or two. Oh. <laughs> But um, <laughs> anyway, we'll give this mince a bit of stir. Both thought that was good. <laughs> Rounding that off. Right. So chilies. We've got a small knife here. We split them down the middle. And there you see, there you, you can see, you know, the chili inside. So to get that all, all you have to do is, is run run the knife against the flesh, against the flesh, and remember it's chili. So when you've got them out, when you've got them prepped, don't forget whatever you touch, do you wash your hands again, or have chili on it, you know? And for blokes, going for a quick, you know what, you'll know all about it if you go and grab your little touch. <laughs> uh, and if people wipe their eyes and then wonder why they're crying and burning again, it's the chili. Or you can smell that's a hot chili. So I'm only going to use one fresh chili because I've also got some dried chili powder. But, um, and again, so I'm just going to chop this chili up fairly fine. I don't know if you've all been practicing your knife skills. I remember. At the beginning, I showed you how to do this. It's just very easy. You just make a claw with your hand, put your knife blade away, 
and chop away. And you, you, you won't, I won't say you won't, but you can get you should. But you take it at your own pace. You know, we're all, we're all different. Like I said, I've been doing it a number of years. I think my mum gave me a knife rather than a rattle. And I think my dad wanted me to use the knife rather than a rattle when I was young. But he did laugh in really. But anyway, so we're putting the chilies now into the, um, into the mix. And I'm just going to get rid of these chilies. There wasn't that many seeds in these, actually. I was quite surprised. But um, what I am going to do is use a wet cloth, wipe my knife, and I'm going to wipe my board, which has had the chili on, just in case. And there we go. So, mmm, you can smell that now. Let's uh, give this mince. You can see the chili in there nice. You can see how that mince is broken up. Um, and the onions are still in there. You know, that's going to be great. So our next ingredient will be, uh, will be the um, tomatoes. This was a good brand. I've not used it. Well, it's our drama, which I've used. But these ones are rich and thick. They've actually got some tomato paste in with the tomatoes. Because I've actually brought, I didn't know that, and I brought tomato paste just in case. So um, quite thick. So we'll put that can of tomatoes in, and I will also do what I usually do. This water is still fairly warm. I shall use half a can of half fill the can with water, give it a bit of a stir, and I add that to it as well, and that brings us into a nice gravy then, let's give it a stir and then I'll show you. You see the, the red there from the from those tomatoes, look how rich red that is from the lovely tomatoes with that paste in it. So I'm going to get that back on, I'm going to put a lid on it, that will help cook it a lot quicker. Red kidney beans, main ingredient in this, it's a uh, but they come in a can, like any vegetables, like we did last week, wash them because they come in, they're like in a brine, they can be, you know, you don't want that, you want them nice. And so you wash all, wash what they've been uh, canned in away and uh, they taste much nicer. Otherwise they get, your taste like a gluggy taste, understand what I mean. So just in a colander, you dip them in and run them under the cold tap. Good. And uh, if you, you know, you can use fresh ones. If you use fresh uh, beans or dry beans, don't forget, you need to soak them to a minimum, a minimum of 48 hours. Some people just think overnight, but you can soak them, but you need to change the water as well. You'll see they're for men and you get all the scum on top. So yeah, 48 hours is a minimum, I would say. And uh, then you then you can uh, you can use them in your dishes, you know. Okay, this uh, mince is boiling away. Mm, smelling quite good. Take that down a bit more. Kidney beans in. A bit of a stir. You can put as many kidney beans as you like. That's 500 grams to one tin. Now, what's in one of these tins? 200 of it, 240. So half and half, roughly. So that's a, a good a, a good thing to go by. Now, I'm also now going to um, put the old secret ingredients in smoked paprika, like I said before. Uh, about probably two teaspoons, two heat teaspoons. Don't have to, but I like it. Let's give that a stir through. And that'll give it a, a, a real deep rich. Like I said, you can't smell it, but um, it does smell nice. You can smell the paprika. I like paprika anyway, but you can smell the smokiness now of this, you know. Um, unfortunately, um, O'Khan, she doesn't have a, 
she um, lost her ability to um, smell things in probably all the coach yeah, when she was young. But no, I'm only joking. <laughs> There you go, she's nice colour there. beautiful, it really looks fabulous. I'm going to get a teaspoon, I'm just going to have a taste of it. Good. Now, I am going to add just a little touch of coriander. About half a teaspoon. And it's, mm. it's not particularly hot at the moment. So I'm going to put some ground chilli in. It's about a teaspoon. I'm also now <laughs> going to put some stock in. So I've got dried stock here, and I'm going to put in roughly roughly a dessert spoon there. Put it in now. Stir this in because it will go. It also you becomes a thickening agent as well. That that I think with the stock they have corn flour in it as well. You know so. Um, and that's thickened up already. Beautiful. See how, see when I put that stock in, you can see it, how, how, how it thickened up. So, um, most, most sauces, whether they're mixed like this or if they're single, you know, like a white sauce, the rule of thumb is to make it so when you put a, a wooden spoon in or any spoon, it's what they call to coat the back of a spoon. So if you get a sauce, and you want to know if it's right. If you if if, if, if it sort of coats the spoon like that, gives it colour. You're pretty much right. Let's have another taste. That's quite salty, and that's those tomatoes with the cake. So I'm just going to have a very small touch of sugar. You might go sugar, meat, no. This one, mate, you, it's not like having a cake or anything like that. So we're just going to put in, oh, that's, that's about a, probably a quarter of a teaspoon. It will just take that saltiness off. And that's why I don't cook with salt as well. Um, in that stir. Another taste. Much better. I'm going to turn the heat down on that and put the lid on. Put the uh, lid on the bits and bobs. Turn that right down. Now, guacamole. Look, guacamole, guacamole. Guacamole, I don't know. There's so many ways. I call it guacamole. Anyway, basically it's avocado. Uh, it's avocado. I'm going to use one avocado. I'm going to use half a white onion. I haven't got any lime, so I'm going to use lemon. I'm going to use the coriander. Um, you might think coriander is not a Mexican thing. It actually is. I can't remember the name, but they, they actually use a the plant the coriander comes from. I think silicano or something like that is what they use. But coriander is part of that, so that's what we use. So um, a little bit of avocado. You want them, you want them right, but not too too right. Cut down the middle, twist out they come. Now, I'll just give this spoon a quick. Oh, I might have a little bit of another one. Oh yes. Spoons, I am lucky today. Anyway, <laughs> scoop out the flesh. So that came out easy. Take out the pit. The easiest way is to give it a twist, comes out like that. Scoop out the other half. You like avocado? I love it. Quite fattening avocado, believe it or not. A lot of oil in avocado. Stir this mix again because she's boiling away. All right, with the avocado, I'm just going to mash it with a fork. 
you want this, some people make it into a paste. I think it should be a bit lumpy, uh, chunky, lumpy, whatever you want to call it. So, some, so I wouldn't put it in a food processor because the food processor will blend it right down. So with this one, I'm just going to break the avocado up. You could, you could chop it on the board, but avocado, I don't know. If, if you start chopping it, it, it leaves the house. It shoots everywhere. It's very slippery. So um, this is probably one of the best ways to do it. So we're just breaking down the avocado like that. See how chunky that is? Still good. Now in this, now we're going to put some coriander. Not too much. About probably half a teaspoon. Mix that through. Because you don't want you don't want other flavours to take over. That's why I haven't put garlic in it. Some people put garlic in it. Garlic's a very strong thing. And it will, you'll, you'll, you know, you want, don't want garlic or whatever you want to call it, you know. So that's broken that down. A lemon. <coughs> the lemon in half. Use a lemon squeezer if you want. I just use the fork. And and there we go. If you use a lime, obviously a lime's a bit stronger, but lemon time. This is nice lemons. We just right from a gin and tonic later, will we? Mm. So we'll give that a bit of a stir. See how that's mixed through there now, which is good. So we're gonna put the other half of lemon. I'm just gonna do my onion, so I'm cutting my onion in half. Probably only use. Oh, I might use one. I'll probably use two thirds of this onion. It's uh, uh if I'd used it all both the avocados, I would have used a whole half. But anyway, you want this fairly fine, so I'll cut that into strips. And now I'm just slicing it through, chopping it with my knife as fine as I can get. You know, uh, you don't want to have it mushy, but you want it fine. So. Uh, a bit like when you chop fresh garlic, you can do that, and that chops it a bit more. Um, lovely. That goes into the uh, into in with the avocado. I'm going to make this at home and play it on YouTube. Oh, don't tell me porky pies. The most thing you make comes out of a can or a package. You're always over here. I know. <laughs> you can buy this really good. Now, just to give it a bit of a bite, I'm just going to put a bit of chilli in this as well. Not very much. I'm just going to cut a chilli in half. Just going to split it down the middle. Take the seeds out like I did last time. Obviously, you don't. If you don't want, you don't have to have chili in it. Just, uh, um, I think chili just gives it a bit of colour. So there, there are recipes what have have tomato in it as well, but it becomes mushy. So, you know, no seeds there. We just chop this up. Very fine. And. Um, we're looking good. Quite simple, you know, we've only been on the go for probably 20 minutes and we're nearly there. Fantastic. So again, the chilli is chopped. I get my avocado mix. This board a quick wipe, give my knife a quick wipe. And we'll just mix this through. And I've got a nice little bowl down here, I'll put it in. Oh, quick wipes to the uh, guacamole or guacamole. 
Please, somebody tell me how it's really pronounced. I'd love to know. My my ex-wife's Colombian, and she's probably having a right laugh now listening to me pronounce things, you know. Yeah. But then I said, I'm, I'm English. I speak the Queen's English, as you can all tell. <laughs> Apparently the Queen, you know, is related to me somewhere down the line. I'm not quite sure where. But, um, but there we go. Oh, how sweet. Wait. Yeah. Now I. Yeah. Okay, let's have a look at this mint. Mm, smelling good, eh, bud? Beautiful. I say that. Looks beautiful. Good. Good taste. Mm. Tasting good. So now, Ooh. that is good. I'm going to um, eat myself some rice. Uh, remember, this is already cooked. So all I do is I turn hot water from a tap or a kettle, get it hot, turn this mince off now, and <coughs> I just run I just run it over the rice. That's hot enough because you're gonna put your your um mix your rice and, and the chili together so you know it's gonna be hot enough. So uh, if you like it piping hot put it back in the microwave but water out the kettle's fine you know so it's uh, do that. Let's turn that one off. Um, oops. Get a ladle out. We've got some sour cream. Again, sour cream is optional. I like sour cream with pop things. Again, great thing with this. If you don't have rice, do yourself a jacket potato, chili con carne, sour cream. Sour cream is beautiful. Um, just gives it, I don't know, it just gives it that little bit of a, bit of a, um, lift, you know, and creaminess. So we're going to take a nice plate, as we always do. Today, we're going to put, we're going to spread the rice on the plate. That's good. Um, We're going to just, we just do it like that, so we've got a little well in the middle. And now, for the grand masterpiece, we've, I've used a label. I can't find my spoon, Vicar, sorry. Any holes in it doesn't work. That's for my friend David. It's a personal joke. He's the minister of the church. He know what I mean. Carol knows what I mean. <laughs> and I think his whole congregation have got a rough idea what it is as well. <laughs> but there we go. So that's looking good. That looks nice on there. Perfect. Hmm? Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. And then I'm just going to take. Some sour cream. I'm just going to put that on the top. Got a bit of parsley, which was washed earlier on. Oh. We'll put a bit of parsley on like that. And there we have some chili con carne. We have our chili con carne served with some chili guacamole, guacamole, whichever you like to call it. Okay, guys, I hope you enjoy that. Um, and uh, we uh, look forward to seeing you next week. And by the way, guys, and I hope August. Read. The, I think Gerard sent something out to support workers and everything. We we've got two more lessons with Food Bank. Very interesting they are. Uh, we did food labels the other day. Absolutely wonderful. Um, and talk about cereals and how bad they are for you. Some of them, you know, with salt content, etc. But like I said, 
cooking is starting, walking groups going, the music group, coffee and cake in August, patch of hope in August. So everything's happening. Watch this space. Bye. Bye.